In this video, we are going to look at the second application of Bart and Savart's law. That is to find the magnetic field at the axis of a current carrying circular loop. So this is a circular loop over here. And let us suppose current is coming or flowing in this direction. Coming, so to say, this being a 3D picture, current is coming out of the plane of the paper in this case. All right. So what we need to do is, due to current flowing in this circular loop, obviously there will be a magnetic field generated. And you want to find the magnetic field intensity at this point P, which lies on the axis of the current carrying circular loop. So OP happens to be the axis and we want to find the magnetic field intensity at point P. So, uh, so things that we suppose, the radius of the circular loop is A. So A is the radius of the circular loop. And OP is this distance x that is distance of point p from the center of the circular loop is x okay so what we do next is we consider a small elemental length dl dl is a small elemental length so due to current i flowing through dl we can calculate the magnetic field intensity at point p or for that matter at any other point that we you wish to find the magnetic field at so the magnetic field intensity at point p due to current I flowing through dl is given by Bart and Savart's law db which is beyond by 4 pi i dl sin theta by r squared okay where theta of course is the angle between dl and r and what we see is we see that the angle between dl and r that is theta happens to be 90 degrees now how is that so let's check that now, say for example, this pen over here, this one, is representing your current element, IDL, or this is the elemental length, DL. And this pen over here is R. You can see in the picture. So, R is this pen. Okay, DL over there is this. So, what is theta? Theta is this angle between your DL and R. So, as you can see, R is inclined like this so r is inclined okay r is inclined come on here all right so dl is this so this angle is 90 degrees this angle is theta since theta is 90 degrees therefore sine of theta becomes 1 thereby db is mu naught by 4 pi i dl by r squared now remember the vector form of Bart and Savart's law given by this expression. As you can see, the magnetic field dB is so to say given by the cross product of dL and R. That is, we get the direction of dB by using a right-handed screw and rotating it from dL to R. So in this picture, when we rotate our right-handed screw from dL to R, that is when we look from the top here, we are rotating our right-handed screw from dl to r in the anti-clockwise sense like this. So dl is here, r is here, so we are rotating the right-handed screw this way. So when we rotate our right-handed screw in the anti-clockwise sense, what we do, what we get is, at this point therefore, we get the direction of db like this. Okay, it has to be perpendicular to both dl and r. And since we rotate our right-handed screw in the anti-clockwise sense, our right-handed screw comes out. So therefore, it is given by db's direction is this. Now, what we can do is we can resolve this vector db into two mutually perpendicular components. Now, before we resolve it into two mutually perpendicular components, let us consider this angle to be phi. So this angle is phi. So if this angle is phi, all right, then this angle over here will be 90 degrees minus phi because this and this perpendicular and this horizontal, they are at right angles. So if this angle is phi, this angle will be 90 minus phi and thereby again, this angle over here will be phi. Now, why is that so? Because db and r, this is r and this is db, they are at right angles to each other. So if this is 90 minus phi, this angle has to be phi. So since this angle is phi, we can resolve db into two mutually perpendicular components, thereby this 
component will be db cos phi and this component will be db sin phi. Now what we can do is we can consider another elemental length which is at a diametrically opposite point so over here. So this is another dl. So when we consider a diametrically opposite current element dl diametrically opposite to this of course and you can see at this point current is flowing or rather going into the plane of the paper okay at this point current is directed inward so due to this elemental length also due to current i flowing through this elemental length also what we can do is we can calculate magnetic field intensity at this point p so this db over here is the magnetic field intensity at point p due to current i flowing through this elemental length and you can see this db is directed downward of course perpendicular to dl and this is r in that case this r and this r they have the same length so this db is perpendicular to both dl and r and why is it directed in the downward direction it is directed in the downward direction because current is going inward and this is r so when we rotate our right handed screw from i to r we are looking from the bottom and when we rotate our right handed screw from i to r so to say in the anti clockwise sense again the right handed screw gets rotated and when it is rotated in the anti clockwise sense the right handed screw goes downward in the downward direction we are looking from the bottom remember so this is the direction of db now this db also can be resolved into two mutually perpendicular components one is this db sin phi and the other is this db cos phi and what we get to see is we get to see that due to two diametrically opposite current elements okay we calculate the magnetic field at point p of course by the way don't forget this db at point p has the same magnitude mu naught by 4 pi i dl by r squared remember that okay so we see that dbs are of the same magnitudes but when we resolve them into two mutually perpendicular components we get to see that db cos phi components they are equal and opposite so therefore db cos phi component they cancel each other out whereas db sin phi component it gets added up that is we get to see that when we consider two diametrically opposite current elements ideal the db cos phi components of the magnetic fields cancels each other out and db sin phi component gets added up that is exactly what you can see in the picture also so db cos phi components due to two diametrically opposite current elements they are cancelling each other out and the db sin phi component they are in the same direction so therefore db sin phi components due to two diametrically opposite current elements gets added up now this is not just true for these two current diametrically opposite current elements now this is true for any pair of diametrically opposite current elements like when we consider this current element over here and another current element somewhere over here two diametrically opposite current elements the db cos phi component due to this cancels the db cos phi component due to this and the sin phi component gets added up so for every pair of diametrically opposite current elements what is seen is the db cos phi component gets cancelled and the db sin phi component gets added up therefore the magnetic field intensity at point p due to the whole circular loop will be a sum of these db sin phi components therefore we write the magnetic field intensity at point p due to current i flowing through the circular loop is given by b which is integration of db sin phi components only because as we've already seen the cos phi component gets added up so substituting the value of db from equation 2 which is mu naught by 4 pi i dl by r squared as you can see here in equation 2 so substituting the value of db from equation number 2 we get b is mu naught by 4 pi or rather integration of mu naught by 4 pi i dl by r squared into sin phi so b is mu naught by 4 pi i by r squared sin phi all these things mu naught by 4 pi i r squared sin phi being constants it comes after the integral sign because 
the variable over here is dl now that is some length okay and so sin phi r squared everything being independent of independent of this dl r is independent of dl phi is independent of dl so therefore they come out of the integral sign and in inside the integral sign we only have dl dl is the only variable then after b is minus by 4 pi i by r squared instead of sine phi we are writing a by r because as you can see from the picture sine of phi is perpendicular by hypotenuse so which is a by r into now you need to understand this integration over dl is 2 pi a now what is integration of dl now when we are adding small small dls like this okay what are we getting we are getting the circumference of the circle so when we are integrating dls we are rather getting the circumference of the circle and the circumference of the circle is 2 pi into the radius of the circle which is 2 pi a therefore and thereby we get b is beyond by 4 pi i by instead of r what we can write is using pythagoras theorem the hypotenuse squared is perpendicular squared plus b squared so instead of r squared we write a squared plus x squared into a by r is square root of a squared plus x squared into 2 pi a again and simplifying we get mu naught i a squared by 2 into a squared plus x squared whole to the power 3 by 2 so what is this this is the value of the magnetic field intensity at point p due to current i flowing through this circular wire so this is what you need to find in this derivation remember so if the question is like find the magnetic field intensity at a point lying on the axis of a current carrying circular loop okay you have to draw this picture of course this picture of course and this is what you're required to find now one special case that is if x is equal to zero this x equal to zero meaning this point p is lying at the center of the circular loop so what if the point p is lying at the center of the circular loop then we can very easily get from this expression itself since x is zero okay so what we have is b becomes mu naught i a squared divided by 2 into a cube all right and this a squared a cube they divide each other out and thereby we get b is mu naught i by 2a so this is the expression for the magnetic field intensity so to say at the center of the circular loop finding magnetic field intensity at the center of a current carrying circular loop that is to find this expression can be done in another simplified way also i'll make a separate video for that okay um but for now let us again look at another case that is if there are n number of loops we need to find the magnetic field intensity at point p and there is not just one loop okay over here but there are capital n number of loops say for example so if there are n number of loops then the magnetic field intensity at this point p will simply be will simply be n times this expression that is the magnetic field intensity will be mu naught n i a squared divided by 2 into a squared plus x squared whole to the power 3 by 2 remember this